One, two. Okay, hey, what's going on guys? It's uh, Tommy. We're gonna do a shop walkthrough. I got David over there somewhere, following up. Uh, so let's go see what's going on. So we have this Range Rover here. Um, it looks beautiful. It looks like an old classic Range Rover that's been kept up nicely. But there's a couple telltale signs that tell you that, hey, maybe, maybe this is not just a regular Range Rover has upgraded or updated wheels from a, like a 90s model Range Rover. Interior is all redone. Looks quite nice. And then when you come around here, and bam, what do you have? Holy shnikes, this is an electric motor from a Tesla. I don't know exactly what Tesla model, but this has been completely redone and repowered with a Tesla power plant. Uh, and then due to the weight and uh, all that stuff uh, with the batteries and the uh, motors and everything, they put it on air suspension. So it's a Range Rover on air suspension with a Tesla power plant. This is pretty cool. Once we finish what we're doing to it, we'll take it on a road test uh, and take you guys around in it. Um, okay, so we're in the collection. Uh, let's go see what's going on back here. So a Mustang that you guys saw a couple of episodes ago is finally going home. This engine, uh, unfortunately, uh, well, the previous engine uh, blew up. Uh, Daniel, a technician, that good looking stud right there. <laughs> Uh, he finished all this up, so he got the old engine out. Uh, we got the new engine in. So after we got, did the engine replacement on our road test uh, and our data logging, we can see that the fuel pressure was dropping when you would go under a certain amount of load. Like when you would floor or press the pedal down a certain amount and more, um, it would drop fuel pressure, which is not good. And that's probably why the, the engine blew in the first place. So luckily it was while we were data logging it, we can keep track of it and we knew what was happening, so we would let off and not damage the engine. And then we did some uh, further diagnostics and we realized that this vehicle um, has a primary and a secondary fuel pump and one of the modules was bad, not uh, telling the secondary fuel pump to turn on. So we fixed the module, or not fixed the module, we got a new module and this thing is good to go. We did a road test, data logged it, everything's perfect. We got the green light from the supercharger manufacturer, which is Whipple, to let it go and it's going home. All right, we're gonna give you guys an update on the two cars we have here. We ended up finishing the livery on this Mercedes. Uh, the client wanted us to do a Mercedes-Benz livery. Obviously, it's a Mercedes-Benz. The client is into F1, so he wanted us to do a Mercedes-Benz livery, but with his sponsors. So we have his name on there, we have his sponsors, and you know, there we are right there. So we have the livery set up. We have, one thing I just learned actually, fun fact. So the Mercedes livery, the fact that they have a red um, star in their livery is for Nicky Lauda, Nicky Lauda. So Nicky Lauda, when he passed away, the Mercedes family and the Mercedes brand wanted to honor him by doing that on the F1 livery. So that's an homage to Nicky Lauda. Uh, this car, again, since it's an AMG, it already comes pretty well uh, set up. The suspension's already kind of tuned through AMG. You have nice big brakes that are uh, drilled, front and rear, but we're gonna push it up a notch, you know, Spice it up a little bit. Oh, that's a turbo blanket too that we installed. So Forge Racing has a turbo blanket. What turbo blankets do is it will help insulate the turbo's heat. The turbos are inherently very hot because they take one side from the exhaust uh, gases and the other side is the intake uh, um, uh, air that's coming in. It's inherently always hot. So the turbo blanket will keep the heat from uh, kind of dissipating in the engine bay and making everything else um, uh, run poorly. So cold air is more dense, meaning more tightly packed with molecules. Uh, hot air is less dense and the molecules of oxygen are further apart. So if you look, if you're able to take like a cube of space with air in it, for instance, the cold air will have more oxygen in that cube of like a, a one by one cube than the warm air will. So cold air equals more power. More power, obviously your car is gonna run better. Uh, even if you've noticed, your car will probably run better on a cold day uh, or, or cold time, night, day, whatever it might be, versus a hot uh, day. And there's a threshold to that. I'm not talking about like negative 30 degrees. The car doesn't like that. So this car is set up really nice from the factory. You're an AMG, you have a, a four pot, so four piston brake caliper up front, uh, drilled rotors. In the rear, you have a single floating caliper design with drilled rotors and slotted. So again, it's a nicely set up car, but we can always make it better. So these are the parts that we're putting on this car now. We'll start with the white line sway bars. Uh, the sway bars uh, usually go thicker in diameter and be, have a more rigid sway bar. 
it equates into the car being more stiff and level through the turns. So we have sway bars, KW came through with the suspension. That's a rear, this is a rear. You can see that the rear has the rebound adjustment there. Fronts are up here. And then let me show you why the rears are separate. So the factory setup, you can see the spring is separate from the shock. So the shock's gonna live on its own. The spring will probably have the adjustment as far as the rear is concerned. And you can see here how Daniel's already taken out this rear spring. That's this guy right here. So the passenger side, the spring and shock has been removed. This guy's gonna get replaced with that guy. And there's springs in there as well. And moving on to the brakes, we have stainless steel brake lines for the suspension. Again, what stainless steel brake lines do is it under pressure, when you put your uh, foot down on the pedal, the pressure in the lines usually causes a rubber brake lines to expand, giving you a spongy or equating into a spongy brake feel for the driver. So if the driver is complaining or you're complaining about a spongy brake feel and you uh, want to improve it, whether your car's old or whether your car's new and you just want to make it better, stainless steel brake lines are the way to go because the stainless steel doesn't allow the line to expand any further than a certain amount and it gives you a more, comf uh, more um, confident brake pedal. We have the hardware for the brakes. We have these massive rotors. They are just uh, slotted, they're not drilled. We have the Forge six piston front brake caliper. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six piston uh, caliper setup. We're running with the EBC yellow stuff pads made in England, great quality stuff, really good for a daily or even a track use vehicle. And one of the last components for your braking system is your brake fluid. So we're gonna be flushing the entire system with Motul uh, RBF 600. One thing that most people might not know about brake fluid is uh, brake fluid will actually absorb moisture from the atmosphere if you either leave the cap off or whether it's in the bottle or in your car. And also um, another thing that damages brake fluid is when it gets overworked and overheated and gets to a boil over point, like any oil uh, or, or uh, you know synthetic made kind of oil, it'll break down and it's not gonna do what it needs to do properly. So in this case, not only is our client gonna track the car, but also it is a high performance car, so they're, they're meant to be driven more spiritedly. It behooves you to get a fluid in there that's actually made for performance use, made for track use, has a higher boil over point. Uh, and again, the only trade off is the more high performance a brake fluid is, the more it's gonna to wanna to absorb moisture. So the stuff that in your everyday driver that you normally find from the factory is better at not absorbing moisture, but it's not gonna give you as much performance. This stuff right here is gonna give you much, much, much better performance, but it's also gonna absorb some moisture. So meaning your intervals for service are gonna to have to be more often when you have something like this running. But again, it's a trade-off. You want performance, you're gonna to have to pay for it, or you're gonna to have to put the time in it to maintain the vehicle. Hey, is this cute little spring that's gonna go over there? Yeah. Nice, look at this little thing. So there you go. So with performance springs, you often see a bigger uh, mainspring and then a secondary spring. This is how they just, the engineers have designed it to give you the best uh, progressive ride uh, through the travel uh, uh, band of the suspension. You'll get the best. So when it's a small hit, you know, uh, the, the lighter spring takes action and, and soaks up those lighter bumps. And then the big heavier hits that cause the whole suspension to compress further the big boy takes it. Bam, this is the, you know, this is my world. Raptor update for the mid-travel kit we're doing on this white one. It was about a day ago where I gave you guys an update where we just had the upper arm and the lower arm installed. Daniel, within a day's time, was able to assemble the rest of the arm, which means, or a suspension, which means the spindle or the upright was done, the rotor, the caliper, the hub was installed, the um, tie rod was done, the extended axle was installed. So this bad boy here to here, is an extended axle. You got your primary coilover. This bad boy right here is in, and the reservoir is still loose. We're gonna have to mount that. You have your bypass in, and you have to mount the actual bypass. You have your stainless steel braided lines. So you can see over here, DOT compliant. It, again, this is much bigger in thickness in comparison to the um, Mercedes, but again, the vehicle's heavier. So it goes by the vehicle's specifications, but you have a longer extended line. So when the suspension travels up and down and droops down, you are not snapping these lines. So this is extended. We're gonna get, an, uh, this is routed differently so we have more slack on it. This is your ABS line. So passenger side is done. Oh, well, so this tidbit that you see here, this vehicle had live valve suspension. So that sensor is not gonna be needed anymore. So we need to delete the, the ride height sensors from the front and rear uh, of the vehicle. Um, on this side, you can see, so the upper is done as it was yesterday. He put the coilover in, the bypass in. The line is ran, but it's not obviously connected. So this is the extended line for the brakes. 
the ABS sensor, uh, reservoirs, and yeah, and this is coming along quite nicely. All right, so we're gonna keep you guys updated on this build for this Raptor, because there's quite a few parts still coming in. One of the bigger pieces of the puzzle is the rear axle. Eric has to go to the gas showroom, so that's important. But so one of the bigger pieces of this puzzle that's not here is the rear axle that's being made. So we're kind of we're kind of at a standstill until those items get here. So still work in progress on this Raptor. Um, I got to go run back up front, but uh, this is going to wrap up this video. But I wanted to remind you guys that if you guys are interested, we're going to be doing a monthly cars and coffee meet at our Porsche Santa Clarita store. Again, it's in Santa Clarita Valley. It'll be a monthly show. If you guys are interested in uh, participating, bringing a car down, or just coming and uh, looking at all the cool cars there, uh, check up on our social media at Galpin Autosports, our Instagram, or you could check on Porsche Santa Clarita's Instagram and you will get the information on that. Until then, we'll see you guys.